something that the Indians ask, but most uh, most of the time when you ask a Pakistani or Bangladeshi, they ask you which route did you come from? Okay, yeah. okay. You know, so because it's a big mixed bag of both yeah. documented and, you, and undocumented. Uh, he tells you the sort of trajectory. Yeah, uh, how they come. Uh, so for me, that is interesting because I mean, you know, how how are they negotiating with the first world? Yeah. And uh, so so identity anyway, whether it's in Delhi, whether it's in yeah. anywhere except outside. Mm. So it's it's important to know where the story is beginning. Of course. So, yeah. No, I mean obviously uh, not only identity by that I mean. Is the sense of place that you are sort of, I mean, I use it in a positive sense, you're obsessed about. Um, mm. Delhi Calm, the book on emergency, obviously it's, um, it's a, for me it's a space-time curvature book because it takes you to a certain era in our sort of, sort of post-47 history, emergency, etc., etc., but it also takes you to a certain place, which is Delhi, which is mm. some a place where we are here at right now. Um, you've grown up throughout in Delhi, um, so I mean, it's not surprising that you would be interested in doing a book about Delhi, 77, 75, 75, 75. Uh, my question is, but I think you go beyond your interest in your place. Hmm. You also are interested in places which others also claim or belong to. Yeah. Um, I think Delhi Calm proves that because you are interested in, you know, a Bangladeshi writer's understanding of what Bangladesh means to him, what a Pakistani writer, and I can see you sort of being interested in what, you know, a, a, a sort of a Sicilian's idea of Sicily would be, you know, uh, I mean, they don't have post-colonial, but you can call it post-godfather world. Uh, Mario Puzo mm. will be interviewed and etc. etc. So, yeah. sense of place is something that you're. Um, well, I'm Delhi Kam, I actually tried to do it from an outsider's perspective. All the three characters are actually outsiders who right. are trying to crack Delhi. Okay. Which you obviously aren't. Which I am not, but I have always lived with so many people I've worked with okay. who are trying to crack Delhi. And for me, that's a very interesting journey in how they yeah. crack it. You know, any city is cracked by outsiders. I mean, Delhi guys do really well in Bombay. Right, right. You know, yeah. outsiders do really better than Delhiites here. Yeah. There's a certain fire, there's a certain urgency, there's a certain yeah. way, they know the shortcuts, they know the ways to of crack course. it. Yeah. You know what you well, a Delhi guy is sitting like that and then waiting mm. for good things to happen to him. Mm. So, for me, that is a very interesting journey. Yeah. As to how people come and make the city their own. Right. So, and how do they do that? Whether, do, whether they do that politically, creatively, hmm. in terms of trade, I mean, that is very interesting. So, the characters in Delhi Kam are actually trying to crack Delhi through their own ways. Especially in a very interesting, in very interesting times, by which I... Oh, yeah, which is, uh, which is actually, yeah, which is the mother of all, which is which basically when, when the emergency is declared and, and people really don't know which side everyone is on. So for me, what is interesting is that uh, there's a certain, uh, certain sense of suspicion and there's no sense of ownership. So I don't really know if you're my friend. Mm. I don't know who, whose side are you on. I don't know when you're peeping on me. Mm. And I'm try trying to make a living in this city. But as a, as, as a sort of writer, artist, it also gives you a sort of liberty to sort of A, explore other people's definition or idea of a city, as well as your own so it's almost like you're looking at people, looking at you, looking at yeah. them. So um, I don't want to sort of focus on Delhi because actually uh, I think you're really good in terms of places and it just happens that you know Delhi well and you're interested in Delhi right now. But I'm just saying, um, for me, Delhi seems to be a, a, a city which, as you rightly pointed out, almost doesn't have any baggage with it, or I mean baggage that we understand. and. You're looking at Delhi Khan through outsiders who sort of claim, mm. claim it as their own when this sort of terrible event of democracy suddenly sort of disappearing happens and how each of these various characters react to it. Yeah. So in a way, it's almost like uh, you use history to tell stories about like five or six um, sort of friends. Yes, I mean, history is a... History is a it's not a crutch. I mean, it, it, it's it's the lifeline that actually uh, really mm. interests me in, uh, to talk about stories. But I I really like reading a lot about Delhi. I mean, I can read and read and read about Delhi. Sure. 
And uh, what interests me is that how different people over the times have um, looked at it and uh, have made it completely a different version than the city could really be, you know. Like, I, I, can I just read out one, one piece? Um, this is uh, Francois Bernier, who was a 17th century uh, travel writer. And uh, he writes, he's writing to the, to the, to his governorship in Paris. And uh, this is in 17th century when Aurangzeb is uh, ruling the city. And Bernier really doesn't like the city. I mean, he, his heart hangs for Paris. But uh, he's st still trying to deal with it, say nice things about it. And he begins this piece by saying, oh, it's so hot here that the, even the king doesn't wear stockings, you know? But uh, then Bernier travels to Agra, which is supposed to be more beautiful than Delhi. And by this time, he has really had it. I mean, he can't take the heat, he can't take the dust, he can't take the plebeians there. So he's writing now to the governorship. Um, you did not quit Paris. However, to contemplate the finest, the most magnificent view of the world, or assuredly, it may be found at Pont Pontneuf. Place yourself on that bridge during the day, and what can be conceived more extraordinary than the throngs of people and carriages, the strange bustle, the various objects by which you are surrounded. Visit the same spot at night, and what I fearlessly ask can impress the mind like the scene you'll witness. The innumerable windows of the lofty houses seen from the bridge exhibited their chastened and subdued lights. While the, sub, while the activity and bustle observable in the day seem to suffer no diminution until midnight. There, honest citizens, and what never happens in Asia, their handsome wives and daughters perambulate the streets, without apprehension or quagmires or the thieves. And to complete the picture, you see in every direction long lines of brilliant lamps burning with equal constancy in foul and fair weather. Yes, my dear friend, when you are on Pont Neuf at Paris, you may boldly ever, on my authority, let your eyes behold the grandest of all artificial scenes in the world, except possibly parts of China and Japan, which I have not visited. What will the view be of its beauty when Louvre is completed? This is the time when Louvre is being built. Finally, he ends this piece with saying, The view of Constantinople, however, derives its chief beauty from nature, whereas in Paris, everything so nearly so is artificial which to my mind gives more interest to the view of the latter because the work of the man so displayed indicates the capital of a great empire, the seat of a mighty monarch. I may indeed say, without partiality and after making every allowance for the beauty of Delhi, Agra and Constantinople, that Paris is the finest, the richest, altogether the first city of the world. You know, for me it's interesting because just a para before and a page later he's moving in Shah Jahanabad. He's moving around in Chandni Chowk. So, I mean, sometimes you need uh, to be in another place to sort of wax eloquent about, you know. Woody Allen, Woody Allen said that, that when I'm in New York, I think about Paris, and I, in Paris, I think about New York. Do I mean, you know who he uh, sort of uh, fills that from? Uh, Pushkin. Oh. Uh, Eugene Onegin, he said, like, white Russians go to Italy to be nostalgic about Moscow. So I think, uh, I mean, in, in a sense, I felt that in your SMS, uh, mm. in that SMS picture, it's like both of you are incredibly, I mean, obviously it's about your curiosity about how he comes to Paris, how he's negotiating with Paris, but you're also... It's a nostalgia to say this, speak the same yeah, language, uh, yeah, and talk about uh, the... Yeah, and it sort of heightens everything, hmm. in the sense like, if you met him probably in, you know, Delhi, obviously he's a Pakistani, so there'll be a certain yeah. sort of... It just goes up when you're in this sort of... Um, totally. And Delhi, I wouldn't even know he's a Pakistani, yeah. right? So, I mean, that interaction would not have happened. I mean, uh, I mean, this is Delhi history. I, I, you're also sort of interested, to put it mildly, in politics. Um, mm. and, uh, I think uh, you, you come to your sort of brightest and most uh, sort of fiercest when the sort of history and politics mixes, I mean, which is the case in Delhi Town, it's the case in the, uh, some of the partition stories in the, the, this side, that side also. My, my, uh, my question goes back to what you said about your influence and clear love for Amatsi Pratapa, because 
Amatitukata, uh, I can now understand in a very sort of psychoanalytical way your sort of uh, understanding and love of history, but. Um, That's a very bad tag to have, where you come on love for Amatitukata. History came from I, 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 I understand, because I, I saw pictures of these apsaras with their belly button showing. And that didn't happen in Delhi Kam, no. Not in Delhi Kam, yeah, in Amatitukata. I, I know, I know, yeah. No, that's when, uh, but the point that I'm trying to make is like the, 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 the history part obviously is there, the politics part I, I was just talking about. What, what makes you um, sort of choose history? What makes you, I, I, I'll try and make it simpler. Why don't you write about, I mean, there's Amatita Kata and there is, uh, there used to be sort of Indrajal comics, right. which is a sort of a, um, Superhero action yeah. figures, uh, obviously based in a sort of kind of semi-real world, if you remember right. Bahadur, yeah. Badlands of uh, the yeah, UP. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just saying, you you are more comfortable, you're more interested in the world that is there, that is here. Yeah, That's uh, because also that uh, speculative fiction has really not been my sure this thing, and uh, I don't really have I've never been drawn much to the, even the superhero. Variety, you know, lanky guy like me. I mean, I don't want to take over the world, and and neither do I have this angst to create a superhero who will take over the world. Because I'm, because I'm a lanky guy. guy yeah, because I'm a lanky guy. guy. Yeah. But uh, for me, what's interesting is uh, yeah, the people around me, and 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 for me, there are so many stories there. The reason I asked you that is, you start, uh, for instance, Delhi Kam with the Harold Pinter line, um, mm. and. And I'm saying it because I'm sort of also interested in myself in which how real things and made up things, yeah. fiction and non-fiction sort of meet, collapse, etc. Right. etc. Et and you use it uh, right. to a very large extent. Um, and the Harold Pinto line, I'll just sort of read it out. It's, uh, there are no hard distinctions between what is real and unreal, nor between what is true and what is false. A thing is not necessarily either true or false. It can be both true and false. Um, politics obviously works in a certain different parameter because, I mean, especially in uh, sort of practical politics, you have to choose between black, white, at least magenta in between. Does, how do you use, yeah. not, uh, you know, make up the characters and put them in a... In my take on non-fiction is that, um, it's non-fiction, right? I mean, so even a lot of the things which is like made up are can be non-fiction because um, they're not really stories. How much do you research and when do you research? Research is very important. Research, I think, is very critical. I don't really go to, don't want to get get a few things right, wrong. I mean, in terms of historically or in terms of the facts, right? research is extremely critical for me. Yeah. But for me, what in terms of dealing with non-fiction is that uh, I want to take it to that level where. Where, 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 where uh, I wonder, did this really happen? Right. I mean, so is it really true? I mean, so I mean, whether, whether, whether even if it's as real, but you know, but did this can it actually go to that level, or whether it's bizarre or or, or speculative or 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 even sure. just pure fiction, non-fiction? I mean, yeah. you know, so yeah. I mean, emergency that you talk about in Delhi Kam is one thing. I think it's still sort of most people here know about it, we don't necessarily have to be around there uh, in Delhi or whatever to experience it and all that, but we, we are aware of it. I think your piece in, um, is it right with piece? What's, what are you guys? Story? What are you guys? Uh, Story? Graphic novel? Narrative? Narrative. Narrative. Yeah. Narrative. You guys graphic novel? Uh, 149. No, your, your uh, narrative. narrative, your narrative. Story? I like narrative more. Okay, I mean, yeah. it's, it sounds cooler. Cooler, yeah. Your narrative in um, this side, that side is actually a slice of history. You talk about a slice of history which is less familiar to most people um, than, let's say, emergency or you know, eighty-four sea riots or uh, things that we still talk about. I mean, one day, probably ten years down the line, we'll talk about nineteen ninety-two Gujarat riot. Um, mm -hmm. I, that's uh, 2002, lovely one, 2002 uh, Gujarat riots. I think there's a sort of element of um, 
you telling the reader that this actually happened. There's a sort of urge for you to make people remember things. Yeah. Um, Delhi Town does it by telling you this is my take on the remembering. A good education, which is the narrative in this collection, and this side, that side, not only does your take of, and it's a very personal kind of take, but it also tells the reader that this actually happened. So there is a sort of element of didacticism which is there, which kind of um, is, you know, I, I think it's interesting. Do you feel the need to tell people um, no, you know, it's also, I think, and I don't, really, I, no, I, I, I don't, I don't really uh, have this thing that I need to tell people. I think I, I, no, do, I do thing. stories to know a bit about myself because yeah. the, these are the things I would explore. Could you give